Hi, I'm Catherine Holloway, um, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, Seaborn and Pandas and the robot operating system. So I work for ClearPath Robotics, which is a robotics startup in Kitchener, Waterloo. OK. <laughs> um, I've never heard Waterloo get a like woohoo before, so OK. <laughs> Um, so at ClearPath, we use the robot operating system, and that is a piece of open source software for Linux. And what it does is it has keeps a registration of all of these um, individual node programs. These node programs can be written in C++, Python, or Lisp, but I have yet to see um, an actual working node in Lisp, so eh, I don't know. Um, and each of these nodes uh, can publish and subscribe to information that is going through this ROS master. Um, for example, if you have a robot with a camera on it and you're going to do some image processing on it, you'd have one node that is just kind of like a hardware driver that picks the images off the camera, and then it publishes that raw information. And then you have another node uh, that d actually does some calls to OpenCV and processes these images. The other piece of open source software that we use a lot is called Gazebo. And it's basically a game engine, but it's used for simulating robots. So if you have a robot in the real world that has a body shape, it has a bunch of sensors on it, um, you can make a model of that robot um, in simulation, and this allows us to do a lot of testing on uh, code that goes on the robot before it goes on the robot. And then, so I have to tell you about what ClearPath actually does. So this is the promotional video for uh, ClearPath's latest product, which is a self-driving uh, vehicle for industry. Now, this is like really revolutionary because the thing that this is replacing are uh, AGVs that go around factories on magnetic tapes. And this does not require any magnetic tapes. It's using uh, state-of-the-art algorithms in um, robotics, plus it's LiDAR to be able to figure out where it is uh, within any environment. So at ClearPath, I, the next video that I'm going to show you is kind of a demonstration of a project that I worked on. Um, you can see me up in the uh, upper right corner there, kind of blurry. Um, so I work in quality assurance at ClearPath. And this is actually uh, really important, especially on projects like this. So what I'm doing in this project is we have a set of seven quad rotors, and they're in um, a very, very fancy motion capture system. So we can track the locations of each of the quad rotors. And we've, um, we've told them to go into this very specific list of targets. Now, if any of these quad rotors doesn't hit its target, bad things will happen because the next quad rotor in the line will crash into it, and the entire thing will come down, and you'll just have broken quad rotors any, everywhere. So my job is to qualify um, how well does the robot actually, uh, it, its internal estimate of where it is, how well does that match up to its actual me uh, measurement of where it is in the world? So for the rest of this talk, um, I'm just going to give a demo of how I can use Python uh, for data exploration in a very complex environment such as robotics. So this demonstration is going to be based on the RASBOT. The RASBOT is a project where you can turn a Raspberry Pi into a robot that runs the robot operating system. You can get all of the um, STL files to 3D print the body and the wheels online, and you can get all the source code online as well. Now, one of my coworkers, um, as part of a hack project, decided to take all that and make the uh, ROS simulation so that schools could work on their uh, software for the RASBOT um, if they only had one RASBOT around. Now, the thing is that uh, the real world and simulation are always different. And because of the way that friction is modeled in simulation compared to how you're going to actually see friction in the real world, um, this means that there's going to be errors in our simulation. So though RASBOT is kind of dumb, it doesn't have a lot of uh, ways to sense the internal world, it can guess where it is by dead reckoning based on the number of times its wheels has turned. Now, if friction is not modeled correctly, this means that the wheels are going to turn, and it's going to slip, and it's going to estimate that it's gone farther than it actually has. So this is where Seaborn and Pandas come in. So I am, was primarily an R person before coming to Python, so I really like Seaborn because it makes um, everything that you can 
do with the pretty uh, statistical visualizations in Seaborn available in Python. And Pandas also allows you to uh, take all of the functionality of data frames from R and use that in Python as well. Now, I really, really like violin plots. They are very, clo very close to my heart. Um, if this looks unfamiliar to you, it shouldn't. Um, it's basically just you take a probability dist distribution. So for example, if you assume your errors were normally distributed, um, you flip it to make it symmetric, and then you rotate it 90 degrees. And there's also uh, box plots on them. And if you were here at the keynote, um, the speaker explained what uh, box plots were. All right, so I'm going to actually talk about how you build uh, a node to do this data analysis in real time in ROS. So it's all written in Python. It's in one Python object. In our initializers, the first thing we have to do is initialize a ROS node, which I'm doing here. The next thing is that um, we're going to initialize a publisher. So sh I should explain this experiment. What we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to uh, collect data while we tell the robot to drive at certain speeds, and we'll look at the effect of greater speeds on the error. So we need to initialize a publisher in, a in order to be able to tell the wheels, hey, spin at this, at this speed. And then finally, we want to uh, make subscriptions to the data sources that we're going to analyze. So here, I have one subscriber to the wheel to the robot's internal odometry based on its wheels turning. And I have another one that is subscribing to the information coming in from Gazebo about where the, all the objects are in simulation. And then I have my callbacks here. So the callback for the model states uh, for the Gazebo information is pretty simple. Um, it's just two lines. The first one is, let's look through the list of all um, incoming objects and pick out the one for our robot. And then let's just store it as our internal ground truth. And then the callback for the odometry is a little bit more complicated, and I'm really simplifying this. Um, because the odometry doesn't come in as uh, fast as the, uh, as the ground truth, we're going to do all the processing for the errors in that one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the absolute magnitude of the displacement um, between we, the messages that we got. We're going to compare how much it thinks it moved to how much it actually moved. And then we're just going to append that to a list of errors. And the final piece of the code to run the experiment is um, we have a list of speeds that we want to try out. We have to create a twist message, which is the data type used to communicate with the uh, wheels. And we're going to set it to that speed. And then um, we're going to, while we're still waiting for more samples to come in, um, we're going to add that to our uh, observations data frame. And we're going to plot it. So. And then we're, finally, we're going to keep publishing this message to spin at that speed um, for the duration of the experiment. So this is what it looks like when it's um, all put together. So I have one call to ROS to launch both uh, the simulation and uh, my plotting window. And oh, I guess the window got kind of cut off. But you can see that there's a graph being generated there. It's now switched over to a, the second driving speed. It's going out. Uh, 20 centimeters per second. And um, in the background, you can see the RASBOT actually uh, spinning around. And we're seeing the errors come in uh, in real time. And this can be very helpful. So you can sort of, um, while you're watching your robot, see um, areas where the performance is going crazy compared to normal. And there you go. So this kind of tells us that, as we kind of expect, um, the uh, error does get worse as you drive faster. And not only that, but it seems like there's, uh, there can be very large positive errors um, that seem to have a general linear trend upwards as you increase the speed. All right. And um, this demo is intended as kind of a teaching demo to both um, using Python in ROS as well as plotting. Uh, more advanced plotting in real time with Ross. So I've put my code up on GitHub, and you can try it out if you want to experiment with um, Ross and simulation. Thank you. Well, we definitely have some time for some questions. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Great. Can you make sure to repeat the question after he answers it in the mic? Thank you. Uh, is this perhaps a little bit off all and, and, and off topic? What do you think about the applicability of the robot operating system for non robot applications? Like lots of systems being published in the drive 
So this is a question, what is the application of the robot operating system to non-robotics uh, problems? And I think that there definitely is a lot of uh, application. Um, prior to uh, working at ClearPath, I worked in uh, quantum optics, which is not robots, but you do have to like automate a lot of experiments and you're still working with a lot of hardware. And had I known about the robot operating system prior to uh, joining ClearPath, I definitely would have used it there. Anyone else? The violin plots, you explained how it was kind of like a, a Gaussian flipped over and rotated. Um, I, just, I noticed there was two kind of wide parts on the violin. Is that like front and back wheels or something? Or? So I don't know. Um, the whole thing about, or sorry, the uh, question was, um, why does it the violin plot distribution not really look like a Gaussian? And the, the best answer I can give you is that um, Gaussian up, uh, errors are kind of what you hope for in the best case. It means that your system is really, really simple. Um, if you have something other than a Gaussian, it means that your system is complex. And because we are dealing with like a complex mechanical system, it's almost always going to be uh, non-Gaussian. Um, but this is also really helpful for sort of exploring your controller loops that um, if there's a bimodal distribution, then maybe that, that is a plausible explanation that it could be from the front or back wheels. Um, so that's where you start.